I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Are you sure, bro? Yeah. Hold on, dog. Go get out again. Let me check where you're gonna get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good. He's good. He's good. Dolly, Dolly. You okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you okay? I'm good, bro. I'm good. What you want? I'm good. Fucking oh, leaking gas. Hey, turn it off. All the mission. Turn all the mission off. 
Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. You good, bro? Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come the key is out of the ignition. Flip it, flip it, flip it. My name is Ricardo uh, from RPT Creations. This is my 1995 Honda Civic hatchback. It is 4G63 powered, all wheel drive, uh, named Honda Bishi. This build has been going on for about almost four years now. Uh, unfortunately, as you can see, we had a tragic accident with it. So I would say approximately uh, a month and a half ago or so, we started this whole uh, North versus the South thing. Someone that you may know of, uh, Frustrate, uh, Danny Frustrate, has uh, an all-wheel drive Civic, uh, two actually. Somewhere along the lines, uh, my name got brought up for also having an all-wheel drive Civic. So we were put on a live to try to set up a race between us two. We exchanged um, you know, conversations and we set it up to uh, try to meet halfway to get this race done. Unfortunately, you know, it was just too far of a drive for him to take off to be able to, you know, just make it, you know, one race. Me and uh, my team, we decided to uh, all get together, uh, plan this trip over a thousand miles down to Florida. Uh, we communicated in contact that we were uh, here. Uh, we set up a time and place to, uh, you know, make this happen. And uh, we ended up, we were supposed to go to this one place, um, but we just couldn't agree on it. Uh, respect to Danny, he actually paid our expenses to drive 500 more miles to uh, a location, a close course that he uh, felt comfortable racing. We get down that night, we arrive to the uh, spot. A part of me did not like it. Uh, I was under the impression that it was much safer and much wider. We were supposed to race a quarter mile, we ended up short in it so we wouldn't put ourselves even at more risk at higher speed. We came down, like I said, we were supposed to race his uh, street all-wheel drive car, which to me was more of a competition for mine. He ended up having some uh, issues where the car broke. He was no longer able to race it. So I kept my word and I told him, you know, originally we had spoken, I would race the white car. He said it was too much. So if I had beaten him with, the, with my car, that I would uh, rerun him with his race car. Um, so I ended up sticking to my word. The white car was no longer operational. So they ended up unloading the race car and we lined those two up. Unfortunately, uh, when the race kicked off, we both took off. We're side by side, first, second, third gear. Top of third gear, something happened with this car. It cut off. Uh, thankfully, that happened because I must have pulled, I would say about approximately two cars in front of him and my car got pulled to the edge of the road and I hit dirt and grass and my left tire, uh, my left rear tire ended up kicking out and I lost control. Uh, if you watch the GoPro footage of the in car, you can see I did my best to try to counter the steering. Uh, unfortunately, high rate of speed, you lose control. Nine out of 10 of the times, it's, it's too late. The car just flipped over. Um, I'm seeing trees and woods. Um, first thing I can remember is my rear end getting caught in a tree. Next thing you know, um, I'm upside down and my passenger side hit one of the uh, bigger trees and that's when the car came to a stop on its roof. Thankfully and fortunately uh, for me, um, and you know this was a big eye opener and hopefully for everyone that's watching it is also, uh, thankfully I had the proper equipment in the car. Um, I've actually ever, never even raced this car without all the equipment and even though this isn't this wasn't street racing you know we were off a public road um, however it was still a street environment i've never taken off my nhra stuff like it still had the window net it still had the parachute it still has the uh the fuel cell um cage in the rear which thankfully i did keep that in there and then try to lighten up the car more because 
once that tree smacked the rear, um, it did puncture and it did rip the uh, fuel cell, which is actually in the passenger seat now. While I'm upside down, I had all the ethanol uh, rushing into the car. Had I not had that mild steel box around the fuel cell, things could have probably been much worse and probably ignited. So my point to all that is, you know, definitely safety, safety, safety um, should be considered when we take these cars at these power levels, uh, especially when not on an actual prep track surface. So like I said, thankfully for the cage, uh, it, it did its job. The passenger side bar did take a pretty big hit and had it been in the driver's side, it could have been much worse. I probably wouldn't even be here talking on this interview, but we got the best possible outcome. And at the end of the day, the cage did do its job. It survived the complete rollover. The roof is mangled. However, if you look at it from the inside and if you look at me, I walked out with very, very, very minor scratches and thankfully no broken bones. I was able to kick my way out of the driver's uh, window and crawl out and walk away from the uh, scene. So I'm very thankful. And again, uh, big shout out to KG Fabrications. He is the man, Cody, behind the cage uh, that ultimately saved my life. So. Very uh, big thanks to him, and I definitely owe him uh, a beer one day. We'll give you a walk around with the car, uh, starting with the engine bay, show you some of the damages. Uh, for, the, for the most part, the front end did not get too severely damaged. I mean, the most we've seen so far, we broke uh, the cam sensor. Um, I think the shift the turbo, since it's a B-band, it, sh it shift uh, when it flipped on its side, and it just caught the cam sensor and broke it. Um, other than that, as far as the engine compartment, just the right front clip, uh, the tubular radiator support uh, got crushed in, and um, that's so far the only damage that we found uh, under the hood in the front clip. Uh, the intercooler is still intact, the intercooler piping, um, all four rims and tires are actually uh, not even scratched, shockingly. Um, the whole passenger side is what took the uh, majority of the hit. I mean, if you look at the passenger side floorboard, um, it's over into the uh, tunnel, into the center of the car. The e-brake is crushed, the staging brake is crushed. Um, we had to remove the uh, passenger side bar. We actually ripped it out to be able to uh, release the e-brake um, and get the car rolling. Um, I mean, here we got the fuel cell. This is the part that I mentioned once it took the first hit um, on that tree, it actually uh, punctured right through. Uh, leaked out all the fuel, the seats twisted, uh, the dry shaft is actually ripping out of the, uh, the carrier bearings um, and it's twisted as well. Um, the roof buckled, I mean that's all caved in, uh, but the roll cage again did its job. So I'm going to pull out the seat, that way you can get a better look um, at inside and see what happened with the floorboard and the fasten. So if you get up in there you'll actually see how badly this, uh, this thing took a hit with that tree. Here in the rear end, you can see the other portion that got smashed in. Um, again, the fuel cell was actually sitting right inside of the trunk. Um, and we did have the fuel cell box cage uh, to protect it. And uh, I think that's honestly what helped prevent like uh, the, uh, the thing from sparking. Um, but everything in the rear end, the whole subframe, everything is pushed in. It tore the, uh, the axle boots uh, from rubbing up on the uh, subframe. Um, as far as the control arms, the forks, the trailing arms, I mean, from what the naked eye can see, it looks like everything is straight um, outside of the, uh, the chassis. So a lot of the stuff, I mean, a lot of the suspension and uh, drivetrain still looks like it's uh, salvageable but we wouldn't really know exactly what tweak they're bent unless we, you know, fully took it apart. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, the driver's side has obviously got, you know, scrapes and dents. Um, the door, the driver's side door still does open and close. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, overall, the, the chassis and the body is completely destroyed. However, there's still like a ton of salvageable parts, thank God. Um, we sprayed some starting fluid just to get the motor running and uh, was hoping that there was no issues with the uh, the engine running upside down and not having oil pressure, but we did pull the log. It shut off about three seconds once it rolled over um, and we fired it up. We confirmed there is no knocking, so thankfully, you know, the engine survived. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, the, 
as messed up as the chassis looks, it still does uh, roll forward and back. So, I mean, overall, not too, too terrible. So going way back growing up, uh, my father was a mechanic. He's the one that introduced me and my brother uh, into the whole car uh, scene. Uh, we were wrenching on cars and working on them for as long as, you know, uh, I could remember. I would say that is what grew my passion into the cars. Uh, my father was also like a big fabricator. He was always trying to think outside of the box, always trying to do something different and weird and creative. I've always been known for, uh, you know, just putting stuff where it doesn't belong, basically. So, you know, any different swap that you can think of, I was putting it in different chassis. Uh, when I first created my Instagram page, for those that actually remember me from, you know, four years ago, it used to be uh, 4G63 powered. Um, my first crazy build started off with uh, 92 Eagle Talon. It was turned into an exoskeleton car. It was still remained all wheel drive. And that's where a lot of my following and uh, my name, um, cre you know, originated from. Uh, from there, you know, I had an MK4 uh, Supra. Then I got rid of the Supra and got this Civic. That's when this Civic uh, came into play. So one night, me and a couple of friends uh, got together and we were trying to come up with some ideas. Kicking it with one of my uh, buddies, Adam. Uh, we're, you know, we're big DSM and Evo guys. We, uh, well, he uh, mentioned that we should do a 4G63 swap in it. And, you know, I laughed, he laughed, uh, but then he got serious and said, no, we should really do it. So we ended up leaving off the night with me telling him, uh, you know, find me a swap that's affordable and um, we'll give it a shot. Uh, next thing you know, the next day, uh, he sends me uh, text messages telling me that he found a complete swap out of an Evo 8. I had to stick to my word and do it. We ended up going to their shop with an engine hoist, uh, came prepared, and sure enough, it was a clean swap, 78,000 miles out of an Evo RS. Uh, we got the complete lawn block, transmission, transfer case, wiring harness, basically everything we needed. One thing led to another. Um, we ended up picking it up. We stripped the single cam that was uh, in the car. And from there, I just started, you know, I put the lawn block on a pallet, uh, wheeled it under the engine bay, just started taking some measurements, seeing what we had to do. And sure enough, we had a 4G63 powered uh, Civic. As a lot of people may have seen, I've also done a lot of, uh, a few all wheel drive Mini Coopers with K-Swaps. I also am the engineer and designer for the K-Swap kits for the Mini Coopers. So I've done a ton of those. We've had a K-Series uh, Mercedes along the ride a few K-Swap MR2s, um, and with leaving off with the most recent now uh, is an all-wheel drive SRT4 uh, Neon. All those builds, there's quite a few that I'm leaving out, but you know, that's just an idea. What actually inspired uh, turning this, you know, full-time into a business was actually my brother. Five years ago, he had a tragic accident as well, a motorcycle accident. We were always big into the cars, motorcycles, and um, once he passed, um, I used this platform as a way to, um, you know, uh, pretty much use it as a distraction um, to, uh, you know, heal and cope with uh, his loss. Um, that's where all the crazy builds started happening and I actually named the business after him. So his name was Rafael Philippe Teixeira and that's where RPT Creations came from. So all the creations were all inspired through him and um, this is what I do. I also got to give a huge thanks to uh, the whole team that came out with me, um, you know, thanks to uh, ARP, Automotive Racing Productions. Um, he didn't hesitate at all to grab all his camera, hit the road, go 1,500 miles and document the whole build um, and, you know, the travel. Shout out to uh, my buddy Danny for being the reason for coming out in a huge semi and a trailer loading up all the toys and taking the ride um, and taking his time out from work. Also Albin that came along for the ride, uh, Buddy Brown. And like I said, like we've, we've been, it's been one team, one fight, the whole entire ride. And although what happened, we're still going home with a smile on our face and we're still going home with a running car. Um, I also got to give a big thanks to uh, my tuner, uh, Eric Medina, also known as Yo Solo. Honestly, I've been working with him for with every single one of my builds. Uh, he's been there tuning the car, and you guys have seen how this thing has performed over the last couple of years. Also, Rafe from RRT Motorsports. Had it not been for him, I mean, he's built this thing from the ground up. Real thankful to have everyone on board. Um, there's been a lot of people also, you know, that I I feel like I'm gonna leave out, but 
you know, big shout out to the Drive Chef Shop, Alpha Injection Clinic, my buddy uh, Jeff, STS Auto Design, helping me with all the fabrication on the car. I mean, again, I'm sure I'm leaving a lot of people out, but I just wanted to hit the key uh, people that have made Honda Bishi what it is today. So to close this out, I just want to say thank you to uh, the TRC team and Javier uh, for making this possible. Although it is the end for Honda Bishi, it's not the end for me. I'm thankful to be here, and I'm going to leave that on that note.